this first season for me stepping into new ground of being a Chicago Bulls fan in the NBA could be a very interesting one to say the very least. Good Wednesday evening to everybody here. This is Mac and I am back with another video. Had to complete the uh, you know the Fantastic Four of getting at least one video out under a new name for all four of my teams. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram, link in the description below. So, are the Chicago Bulls at their last dance or at their last shot of really being a serious competitor or at least a playoff team with this current core that we have? And I ask this because while the Bulls did make a couple of decent moves in the offseason, at least the front office was trying to, the fact of the matter is this team just kind of feels like 2023-24 is going to be the biggest make-or-break year that they've had in quite a while because now the core has been here for quite some time and the fact of the matter is that since this core was here, the Bulls are under 500. And I ask this because Vooch, Nikola Vooch, he came on and he gave some and he gave a comment about how this core can shake up this year. And I have the uh, I have his quote posted right here on the screen. So as you can see here, Vooch is pretty adamant and he's pretty um loud and heard about as far as where the Bulls can be for 2023 and beyond, quite frankly. And while it is a very big and meaningful word coming out of a player from this organization that he is looking out for the team and he does have an opinionated vocal about the team, and I'm certainly not overlooking it because this is a guy that the Bulls did re-sign earlier to a new three-year extension. The fact is, I don't know where this team could possibly be moving forward for the next half decade or so. So there are a couple of things that do play into it. And for one thing, you know, DeMar DeRozan is going to be an unrestricted free agent this offseason. So you kind of got to have that mindset of, you know, at what point does DeMar DeRozan go from, you know, I want to win hardware and I want to be a championship tier type of player and I want to lead my team to a championship to him just chasing the dollar signs elsewhere because we've seen that way too often with a bunch of other NBA stars or really good players along the league where they want to win a championship and they want to be a core contributor and key contributor to the team, but they end up leaving for a lot more money. And while the Bulls' ownership has been cheap over the past couple decades or so, to put it lightly, and, you know, the, the thing is, the Bulls have been over the salary cap since the salary cap has been implemented. But the owner, but ownership has done a decent enough job to make sure that we have not been exceeding the luxury tax, but I don't know what good that can attribute as far as keeping a core together goes. So when you see a guy like DeMar DeRozan's value and his playing ability go from, I want to be a championship player and I want to lead the team to a championship, you got to be realistic at the same time and ask yourself, is it going to happen wearing black, red, and white? Is it going to be with the Bullhorns? Most likely with this team, I hate to say it, not likely. Because look at the competition that the Bulls have, would have to go up against in the Eastern Conference. you got to figure Milwaukee's always a threat. Boston's always a threat. The Cavs are a good young team. I mean, just in our division alone, we got to worry about two other teams alone in our division already. Okay? Like I said, Boston's always a threat. Philadelphia finally got it together. New York Knicks, I wouldn't sleep on them. They upset the Cavs in the first round of the playoffs last year and they moved on. Brooklyn, they can even be a pesky team. Miami Heat, they made it to the NBA Finals. There's a lot, the bottom line is there are a lot of, there's a lot of competition in this Eastern Conference right here. So this really kind of does in a way feel like a swan song year 
for this current core that the Chicago Bulls have. And the other thing here that plays into it is has to do with the front office because they have been listening to offers for Zach Levine. And the Bulls, while they certainly do hold him to a high standard, which I you know, I applaud him for. I do think Zach Levine is a little undervalued with the team. The fact is, the Bulls struggle this season, and I'm not talking about, oh, you know, we have our high points and we have our low points. I'm talking about if the Bulls do substantially worse than last year. This was a team that went 40-42 and 42 last year, made the play-in tournament, which honestly probably shouldn't even happen because of how inconsistent we were and I'm not a fan of the play-in tournament I just wish it'd go back to the original 18 format in the playoffs but the fact is if the Bulls are substantially struggling we're gonna have to make some tough choices to move on from the core not really blow it up per se and start rebuilding but make some really tough choices to where we need pieces for the future and we can stock up on some draft capital and at the same time decide who is fit to stay with this team or not. But you have to ask yourselves this question at the same time. At what point do the Chicago Bulls just blow operations up, gut the core, and say, you know what, we're going to suck for a couple years, we're going to get some good draft picks, and we need to just start all over and hit the reset button. At what point do the Chicago Bulls have to have that mentality? Because like I said at the beginning of the video, this team is under 500 since the current core has gotten here. And I really, and like I said, it's big and meaningful right here by Vooch with the uh, quote that he said that I posted on the screen at the beginning of the video. It shows that he's serious and he's down to win games here because at the end of the day, the Chicago Bulls are about winning. Wins are the most important thing in today's league. And that's how it's always going to be. We've had some slabs of success with the core here. But now you have to start asking yourself, is this the last chance or is a, you know, a blow-up operation or rebuild imminent? At w what warrants a successful season this year for the Chicago Bulls? We made the play-in last year. Lost to the Miami Heat. What is a successful season for the Chicago Bulls here? Making it past the play-in? Winning a playoff series? Eastern Conference Championship? What is a successful season here? Because like I said, there is a lot of losing since this core was here. Obviously, we can't build a time machine, go back to the 90s and get Scottie Pippen or MJ or Dennis Rodman. We can't do that. You have to look at the current state that the Chicago Bulls are in right now. And right now, it really is looking like that Vooch may be onto something. Maybe he knows a lot of other things that we don't know because he's the guy that's taking the court at the end of the day and we're just watching the games on TV and giving our thoughts and analysis of it. But what is a successful season for the Chicago Bulls at this juncture? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And this is Mac checking on out for the day. Have a good one, everybody.